Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Ashley, and today we're going to be talking about boobs and my personal experience with my own breast augmentation. And that's basically what this video is going to be. I'm not going to do too much on the introduction, so we're going to go right on to it. So before we get into the nitty gritty, I just completely want to be transparent with you guys. I'm not promoting plastic surgery. I do not want you guys to feel the need to look at yourself differently or spend money on something that you do not truly want. This is something that I wanted and this is my personal experience. So let's get on to it. So funny story, when I knew that I wanted to get my boobs done, it sprung up at a really young age. I was the latest bloomer of my middle school, high school. And, you know, everyone started developing around 6th, 7th, 8th grade. And, you know, my my coconuts never came in. <laughs> so um, I remember I, like, begged and forced my mom to get me a training bra. But, you know, I got it. I was wearing it. And it was literally, like, I would touch it and push it. And it would just, like, kind of implode. <laughs> so <laughs> I felt the need. And I want to say it was either 6th or 7th grade. I got a Kleenex. And I went to the restroom. And I just, like stuffed her up real quick and you know I was like yeah for sure I'm like everybody else and um we're in the middle of a lecture and like the lights were off and we we're looking at the projector and I remember someone saw my little my stuffing come coming out and like I just remember hearing like whispers like oh my god she's stuffing her bra and <laughs> so I went to the restroom and I took it out and you know everyone was talking about it for a good time and that was basically like the turning point I was like if they don't come in by this age, like for sure, I'm gonna get it done. And I just think like at the time it was just, you know, my my own like turning point. So I just wanted like, you know, be transparent with you guys. You know, it wasn't like one day I was super happy with my body, then the next day I wasn't. You know, it was something that was building, you know, I just that's really what drove me to to getting these puppies right here. <laughs> And, you know, if anyone has gone through that embarrassment, because I know I'm not the only one, drop that little story in the comments. This is a safe space for us all to, you know, feel humiliated, feel like we're a little family. So feel free to to drop your, your, your juiciest stuffing bra story underneath. Okay, so the man of the hour, my surgeon that I decided to go to, he's a board certified plastic surgeon, Dr. Ortegon. And he's located here in San Antonio, and he works under the umbrella name of the San Antonio Cosmetic Surgery um, Facility. So, you know, if you, you like what you see and you're in the San Antonio area, I would 100% recommend him. He's so sweet. He was very professional. He was very informative. And, you know, he made the process very easy. He made it um, very you know, it, it, he didn't make me feel like I was just another girl or just another number. You know, he really wanted me to, you know, do my research. And, it, you know, he wanted me to look around and see other surgeons and make sure that this was the person that I wanted to do this surgery. Because it, it's it's a surgery and some people don't really do too much, too much research. So how I found Dr. Ortegon, um, a friend of mine, she got her, her breasts done by him. And I, I really did trust her and she had raving reviews on him and I looked at his reviews online and I saw his before and afters and you know obviously just meeting him and going through each like consultation and going through the, the pre-ops and like everything beforehand and even just before my surgery like he, he just really like made me feel really really at home and he made me feel like I was in good hands and I was I feel great <laughs> so Dr. Ortegon if you're watching this I love you and I love what you did you're a god <laughs> you know and I really do recommend him so the cost of these bad boys right here, it was around $5,500, $5,600. There's different surgeons that price things differently. And, you know, I don't think size necessarily matters. I think it's more like um, the actual implant that you, that you choose at the end of the day. I've had friends that have gone to Mexico and have gotten their boobs done for a lot cheaper. You know, have at it. Y'all can do whatever you want. There's great surgeons all over the world, you know, but that's just what I paid. And there's certain, um, there's like care credit, there's different like payment plans that they could put you on. So if it's something that you really, really do want, you know, a lot of plastic surgeons do offer payment plans and they have like care credit again. So that's basically what, what my, 
what my price was. But yeah, so a quick little overview on the actual types of implants, the different approaches that you could choose from. Initially, I wanted to do the umbilical approach with the saline implants. And basically, it's kind of like they roll up the implants like little like cigarettes and they just kind of like make like trails like a little like you know trail going up and then like they then like inject like they inject the saline into the implants and it like fills it up and um i did some further research on that and i decided not to because i've heard that that implant feels like water balloons and it feels like you know you feel the water and the saline kind of like in your body so it just feels kind of weird is what other people who went through that approach is what they felt so um, i talked to my surgeon about it and we decided to do was 450 cc's and me and my my plastic surgeon we decided to go with the silicone gummy bear implant which is a basically what it sounds like it feels really natural it's a lot more safer than the other the previously um, inserted implants so it's it's a lot safer if there's any leaks or tears or ruptures the implant will will stay in its natural mold so I don't have to worry about rushing myself into emergency surgery. And um, the approach that we went through was right underneath my breast, there's two little like, maybe like an inch scar on each side and you can't see it. So where my, where my breast like folds, it's right underneath. So I'd have to like really lift it so you could see it. And I really am happy with that decision. And yeah, so they went underneath the muscle and I decided to do that last minute. I think either the day of or like my, my pre-op um, surgery appointment, I decided to do under the muscle just because I did some more research and it looks more natural. And that's basically what I wanted. I didn't want something that looked really, really together and really like up here. So if that's what you want, your surgeon will probably advise you to go above the muscle. So I think um, some questions that a lot of people do tend to ask or want to ask is, do I regret anything? Do I regret the surgery? You know, just the plain, simple question, do I regret it? And it's very simple. No, I do not regret it. I'm very happy with the size, the approach, you know, the implant. You know, just everything that that I said previously, like I really did want this for a really, really long time. And I, I tell that to my friends as well. Like if it's something that you haven't been wanting for decades or like years and years and years, I think that's when you run that risk of regret or man, I didn't even hate my body. I don't know why I did this type of type of scenarios, those psychological kind of doubts. But again, I, I've been wanting this for a really long time and I really do love how everything came out and my experience with everything. So I do not regret my, my decision. So oh, the big question, what to expect when you're expecting a pair of, you know, pair of fun bags. Um, I think first and foremost, depending on your surgeon and, you know, just how, I guess, rough or gentle they were with you. Again, going back to Dr. Or Orthogon, like, he really did a really good job because I basically, I got my surgery a week before my finals. So I, I literally had like maybe two, three days to really recover before I had to like go back to class. And um, I think day one, I was just in my head like, oh, this is nothing. This is not too bad. I was so drugged up. I was really woozy, but the pain really didn't set in. You know, so it wasn't that that bad, but I think day two and day three are definitely like the worst days for my personal experience. I have other people that were out for weeks, but um, I definitely couldn't lift myself up from bed. So my boyfriend basically had like the pillow behind me. He would just like lift me up out of bed. And then as soon as I'm up, I was able to walk around and do do my do my day to day things. But I couldn't really like lift anything like you're basically your t-rex arms for like a good week two weeks you're not supposed to lift anything heavier than a gallon you can't wipe your butt so that was fun we don't have a bidet in our house so you know you did a good job <laughs> um you're not um supposed to really like when you're in the shower you're not supposed to be like hit the water's not supposed to hit your your breasts at the at the first initial couple of days so you kind of like let the water hit your back and then you kind of like sponge bath 
pat dry kind of you know real gentle obviously you just went through surgery and um yeah so those first three days were pretty pretty intense um i think they gave me like some tylenol 700s they did the job expect to be dizzy expect to to really be be immobile for a couple days but honestly like day three day four like i was good i went to class i just had my boyfriend come with me and take my notes and stuff like that and that was basically like the the extent of the post op kind of like um what to expect um you can't brush your teeth too you can't brush your hair good luck with makeup so you know if you don't have a boyfriend i think a best friend would be really good too because they could kind of like do you up a little bit but i think like for me like i wasn't really trying to do anything <laughs> like go full glam so i was looking pretty bummy for for a good good week and um another thing to expect is you know you you can't go to the gym you can't work out for six to eight weeks and unfortunately like i really took that to heart i was just like bet i'm gonna eat like crap i'm not gonna watch what i eat i'm gonna i'm recovering and i'm, I'm not gonna be going to the gym so i did gain quite a bit of weight um for those good six to eight weeks so i would definitely recommend anyone going through this type of thing to really watch what you eat stay hydrated do what you need to do when it comes to you know taking care of your body and you know your, your surgeon's probably going to recommend that you start massaging just so you don't build any type of like hardness or any type of like you know you want to make sure that your implants are settling in right and that they look good because if you don't follow your your post-op care you know you're gonna suffer in the long run so even if it's just like little baby like you know cat paws like just do what you need to do wear your, the post-op bra that your that your surgeon gives you you know so just follow whatever your surgeon tells you to do because it's very important so i want to briefly touch on the aftercare of you know post-surgery again you really have to you have to massage you have to really really listen to those instructions and you want to make sure you keep the integrity of your surgery because you're not going to spend all this money and then it not look right because you didn't want to massage or you didn't want to wear the right bras at the right time so you have to basically like you have to wear the little the aftercare bra for about a couple months and then you could wear something with some underwire frills and like lace and stuff like that like don't start wearing like sexy bras day two because you're you're gonna mess up you know the way that they naturally like settle into your pockets so that's a that's an important one things that i wish i would have known um that i really didn't expect i think the biggest one was just how itchy <laughs> my my breasts were and i really thought that i was like going through shock or something i was just like something's wrong because they were they were looking crazy but then when i went to my like my first week my second week my my month kind of like post-op check-ins um i was telling the the nurses that were working there and they're like oh no that's super that's normal those are just stretch marks you know so the stretch marks did go away but i mean i went from a b cup to a triple triple d you know so the bigger you go, the more I think that your your skin's going to stretch. And with stretching comes with stretch marks. And you wouldn't think, like, you're going to be itching, like, out of your mind. So really, really get, like, a really good moisturizer. Um, I was using this kind of, like, um, this packageless um, lotion from Lush. I forgot the name of it, but I'll probably link it or put a little picture right over here. But, yeah, I was using that because it was really hyper, like, it, it moisturized the area really, really well. So moisturize if you feel itchy well, another thing that i wish i would have known is um the sensitivity of your breasts after surgery and like you know recovering and stuff so i didn't lose any sensitivity if anything i was just like hypersensitive everything just like was really really like ow or i feel that or just the normal like day-to-day -to -day touches were just like a little bit too much but now it's simmered down a lot um, I think another one is um, if you're if you sleep on your stomach and like you're about to have like your time of the month or your you know those types of things it's like your your breasts get tender and sore like they they were back then because I went under the muscle so my natural breast tissue is still up top so I still got pretty sore 
So expect that and you know the way that I kind of like dealt with it I would put a pillow right here and a pillow right here so it just kind of like evened out because I, I sleep on my stomach that's how I sleep. So you know you, you, you kind of like finesse your way around those things but those are like the top things that I could think of that I wish I would have known that I now know that you now know. My surgeon offered these like little silicone kind of like strips and if you get them done and you are worried about your scars and like the look of it um those little silicone strips you just like kind of like cut them to like the size of the in the incision itself and you just kind of like lay them flat on the on the incisions and it's supposed to help with like the keloiding of the scars which is kind of like the the unevenness where the where the stitch was and just like the look and the the actual like darkness of it because darker skin tones they do scar a lot more which is why i did want to go through the the umbilical approach but that's just kind of like my little like gift to you i don't know if it's like a new thing or an old thing but i i never knew about that so i think it's important for me to share that for you so yeah when you get your stitches like dissolve and they're taken out you can definitely ask your your surgeon to see if they do offer that talking about the actual bra situation so I again basically was a 32b and then maybe like a couple weeks maybe like a month after my surgery I went to Victoria's Secret and I got measured and stuff like that which I don't really advise just because you're still really swollen and you're not going to really know your true size until maybe like three months four months after so save yourself some money and you know just wait on it a little bit and Honestly, I don't even wear bras anymore just because, like, there's just a lot going on already and they just feel really suffocating and it just doesn't feel natural and it just doesn't feel comfortable for me. So everyone is different, but I bought a bunch of bras and went on this shopping spree at the outlets in San Marcos and really, like, I, I don't wear, like, push-up bras or the padded bras that I got. I kind of, like, wear just, like, the, the normal little, like, underwire, no padding, like, really simple, like, little bras if I do. But um, I love little like silicone like nipple covers like that's my go to. So if I'm wearing like something like this or anything that you know is kind of like nippy, I definitely do like to wear those. And then if not, I do enjoy the little like the the silicone kind of like tape bras. I don't know if you've seen them. I think Amber Rose dropped them, but they basically like they're they're like kind of like two cups and they have like this little like lace little like adjustable tying thing so you kind of like tape one type tape the other and you just kind of like bring them together so that's th those are like my go-to's those are my favorites everyone has their own little like you know post-op kind of like this is what I do but that's kind of like what I recommend so yeah so it's been officially one year maybe a little bit more since I since I got in my my boobs done and I really ultimately and finally want to say that I do not regret it. I really do love them. I, I just love how much more confident I am and just like the, the, the happiness that, that they brought me and you know it really is at the end of the day what, what makes you happy and I just wanted to say that. Um, any really last things that I could probably want to say is you know as soon as you get them done, they don't look like this, you know, they're, they're pretty high up. It takes a while for them to, to fall and drop and, you know, it, it's a bit of a process and it wasn't easy. It wasn't a walk in the park. It's a lot of dedication. It's a lot of, you know, listening to your surgeon. It's, you know, you have to kind of like live your life a different way and you have to be aware of, you know, going to get checked up, getting your annual mammograms, you know, to staying, you know, up to you have to stay responsible and you have to understand that you're not just going to waste your money and you're not just going to invest all this and just like okay whatever like i don't have to worry about them they're done you know so you just have to do your due diligence and stay on top of it be responsible be an adult you know i got them done at 23 and 24 years old so i think it was a, it was a, an appropriate time you know and i was financially able to get them done so i don't recommend anyone to get indebted because of it you know, everything comes at the right time. And if it's something that you ultimately want, you know, you're, you're going to find a way to, to get it done. And, you know, I really do appreciate you guys letting me talk and say what I needed to say. And again, this is a safe space. If anyone has any questions or comments, you know, feel free to shoot them down below in the comment bar. 
Again, my name's Ashley, and this is my second YouTube video. You know, I'm going to be cliche, comment, like, subscribe, you know, turn on your little bell notifications. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my breast augmentation story, and I hope I was able to inform you guys.